Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I kind of wanted to update you guys with day one of the Righteous Fire Inquisitor build progress for Ultimatum League. I was going to make a video yesterday, but with all the server issues, I didn't really bother. I kind of just went to sleep and woke up. So I'm going to go jump into a T3 map. It's not really much, but it does have 15% uh, monster damage with power charge on hit. So monsters are going to be a little bit scary in here, at least in the League mechanic. So let me just jump in. Um, I'll talk about kind of some modifications and my choices of what I've kind of been doing so you guys can kind of get an idea. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and jump into the map. So remember, this is literally budget gear. I don't really have much at the moment. Um, fresh off the boat, new character, you know. I, must I started running Righteous Fire right around after finishing Cruel Lab. So I think I was a little higher level. I was like mid-60s actually. But that's because of the server issues yesterday. Wait, what happened to my RF? It disappeared. What? It like vanished in the water. Okay, let's go try to find an ultimatum. That's where all the juice is right now. I've probably made a little over 100 chaos through ultimatum. It's been really nice so far. No, more than 100 chaos. Not including my raw chaos drops. Got a tremor rod, sold it for 70c early on, so that was really nice. Exploring the boundaries of existence. You are an insect charting cracks of the ancient stone on which you stand. Oh my. Blind to the dead stone forest that encircles. Chill out, my dude. Howls, nomad. It weeps and howls and cries to be witnessed. So we don't have Vol RF yet for boss killing. Um, I haven't really gotten to try the new Vol RF yet, as I just haven't found the Vol RF at all. Trading has been a bit of a nightmare. Oh, there's ultimatum. Nice. I'm being punished. Okay. Um, poopy loot. Let's go with this guy. Alright, we got some sub fizz over here. So the nice thing is with my current setup right now, we're rocking a massive amount of physical damage reduction. Um, note that this is still estimated physical damage reduction, but... Having, you know, between 10 to 14,000 armor is pretty nice. Uh, along with actual physical damage reduction via 5 endurance charges. And if you look at our Pantheon, I'm currently using Lunaris since mobs don't hit super hard, so I'm not really getting stunned. So this 8% physical damage reduction tied together with Gruth Cull with 1% per hit is very, very nice for this stage of the game. You cannot be maimed. That's pretty nice. Let's go with double ruin. Fall to ruin. So the only reason I don't have Infernal Cry right now is because I don't have the links for it at the moment. I would love to get an Infernal Cry set up for these because it should probably just kind of like destroy everything. Uh, sure, let's go large. Lightning, gives little warning. Lightning strikes.
Hey, our Righteous Fire wants to level up. Nice. Alright, that's a 5 link. Looks pretty poopy. Sure, let's go more in. Suddenly. I'm thinking one of my next big purchases, I'm gonna probably try to snag a taste of hate. Drop my life flask. I very rarely ever need the life flask. Stray too far and find pain. Okay, they're starting to hit hard. I think this is mainly the power charges, though. The critical damage that they do. Uh, okay. Um, sure. Ruin seeks you. Whoa, I think that was the lightning there. I should have become a priest of Yarmak instead. Good stuff. I am no beast of burden. Give me the loot. Shaper seed I found? I think it is. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the character now. All right, so to go over the character, pretty much everything on our tree is identical to what we had. The only difference is that precision over here uh, is something I picked up in the early levels. It kind of just fleshes out a little bit of smoothness to the build until you get 30% movement speed boots. It's also really nice for decks for faster attacks and things like uh, Spell Slinger when you're in the leveling stages. When I get some better jewels though, I'll drop this. I also opted out to grab some Chaos Res since this league seems to have a lot of heavy Chaos degen. So I'm definitely going to try to get my Chaos Resist up there. It's negative 21. Um, I still currently have Anointed Flesh. I'll drop it when I get three to two clusters of Molten Ones marks. And then down here... Um, I have actually put three points into inexorable. Normally I don't grab inexorable unless I have a very large thread of hope here where I grab inexorable, uh, warrior's blood, heart of the warrior, um, arsonist, and deep breaths. But since there are so many monsters in this league mechanic, ultimatum, the 10% chance to gain endurance charge when you're hit paired with the 15% chance to gain endurance charge are very good for sustaining it. Then of course you get the life regen per endurance charge, which actually is uh, is pretty nice. Then you get 20% armor, you get armor when stationary, you get armor here and armor here, and this basically just adds up for your granite flask, thus making you like pretty, pretty solid for the early maps. Um, as for where my build is going from here, I'm thinking of getting another large cluster. The only reason why is so I bought this large cluster here for like 5C, and then I crafted it myself and it wasn't that difficult. I used Scorched Fossils to craft this. However, the mediums are going for like anywhere from 20 to 40C just for the base. I'm guessing it's because everyone's playing Burning Arrow. So I'm kind of putting a little bit of a halt to my medium cluster jewels right now. So I think I'm going to just branch with another large, then get another Burning Bright, and then get two more identical jewels similar to this. I was buying max life burn damage area jewels for 3 to 10c each, and they're very strong for their points. And then of course when you get your mediums, you're just going to replace them in so you don't even have to respec anything. Now remember the prices of everything I'm saying are going to vary, so this is kind of just what I'm doing at the moment. So to go over my gear, um, I bought my 6 link for about 25c. Um, 
there's a divination card for the Holy Chainmail called, I think it's, could be wrong, I think it's Emperor of Purity. Um, so you can get seven of those and you can throw them in and then you get yourself a Holy Chainmail. It's very easy to color. And this is currently where my Flame Wall resides. Sorry, this is where my RF is, which is Righteous Fire in KOE, Burn Damage, Inspiration, Efficacy, Elemental Focus. Until we're able to move it to our helmet, tomorrow we're going to try grabbing an Elder Helmet, minimum item level 75, to craft to try to get uh, burn damage with the Essence of Horror mod. Then I'll drop the Hrimnors and then move the Flame Wall to the Six Link. Uh, on my boots, I have Orb of Storms, Hex Touch, Flammability. I would like to support this with Inspiration here, just to make it smoother to play, because I don't really use Flame Wall that much when I'm mapping, unless I'm really in the uh, Ultimatums where I really need it. Uh, flame Wall currently has Burn Damage, Flame Wall, Inspiration, and Ellie Focus. Uh, this is my scepter I bought for like 3 chaos. The reason why it was going for 3 chaos is I'm guessing he thought that the implicit was not, like, like not the implicit, but the fire was a prefix and not a suffix. I mean, it's not really that good of a piece of gear anyway, um, but something like this is totally doable. It's hard to say exactly what you want to prioritize because, like, it's always about the price of an item, right? So, like, items or stats that are very important for you would be plus the fire gems, uh, high fire damage roll, high elemental damage roll. You're not really looking for spell damage because spell damage does not work for RF. It works for flame wall, but not for RF. Um, and then like fire damage over time multiplier is one of your stronger stats. And then of course, just like burn damage and damage over time. Uh, right here, I just have Enduring Cry and Flesh and Stone. I do want to eventually get my Enduring Cry with my Flame Dash and then support them both with Second Wind. Over here, I've got Flame Dash, Vitality, and Purity of Fire. And then down here, we've got the Fortify, Shield Charge, Faster Attacks. I guess I could technically just link Inspiration right here and then get a Triple Red. That would work too. And then I have Inspiration on Shield Charge, which is constantly generating it. Some reason I'm using a Parandas Blazon. I'm not exactly sure why. It just hasn't really managed to kind of sneak its way out of my, my inventory yet. Um, and then I've got this talisman, which is not very good, but it was 3C, and it's 3C for a talisman that gives me massive all attributes, 22% maximum life, and 1.6% life regen per second. So with this being said, I want to take an extra couple of minutes to help the new players out to explain kind of how to trade, because this part's very important. Okay, let me just put on display capture. Don't mind my cue there. We'll talk about that another time. So in the trade, if you go to the search items here, right? Within the search items parameter here, go ahead on the right-hand side and add a stat filter for allocates. Oh, maybe I screwed this one up actually. Here we go, enchant. So enchant allocates, and then you can type in whatever annoyance you want. So like for my build, some big annoyance would be something like uh, some big annoyance would be something like growth and decay. Um, you have breath of flames, and you have golem's blood. There's also a lot of other ones, but you can basically use that method to search for talismans or anything really that you kind of want. Um, the reason why this is good is because you can get such cheap gear that is so impactful at your current level for such a small amount of price until you're ready to upgrade into something else, right? So like, if I just click search now, so let me just do Golem's Blood, search, and you can see all the different things that pop up, and then you can click activate live search, so anytime a new one pops up, it'll ding, and then you can find it. Now to search for your cluster jewels, you're gonna exit here, and you're gonna do enchant, adds number of passives. For a large cluster, the best you can do is eight. But you also need to have two notables. An example here, if you look at mine, you need two notables. So, grant Burning Bright and Prismatic Heart, which pushes the Prismatic Heart back here, so that the Burning Bright is in the front and you can save a skill point. When it comes to medium jewels, you want between four and five. The reason why you want between four and five is if you have two notables, then four and five are the exact same, assuming you want both of your notables. If you only have one notable, you want to have a four parameter search for your actual jewel itself. So to search for these, 
down here, we can type enchant and then added small passive grants. So if I do for an example here, eight to eight, and then I put fire, I'm looking for fire damage. This would be a large jewel. Down here at the bottom, the minimum item level for burning bright is 50. This way, you can't get scammed unless they literally scam you in the trade window. This is what you would be looking for to buy. If you're trying to roll mediums for flow of life and burning bright, I think that's 68 minimum. But to give an example here, you click search. They're all eight passive, one C. This is probably not a thing. They're usually around here like five to seven C. Actually, let's see. Yeah, they're like seven C. So it's not that expensive. Anyway. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you guys had any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Also, feel free to check out the notes section of the Path of Building. Um, I will not be posting this exact Path of Building because I'm not trying to post replicates of my Path of Building around because it really confuses people. So if you want this character, I'm going to sleep so you can just extract the Pox new build and you'll have the Path of Building for that. Um, otherwise, maybe I will post the path of building in there, but then I'll have to copy the main path of building and then put that up above. If you're following the main path of building, then you'll notice in there in the notes section, I have a very detailed guide on basically a lot of different things regarding Righteous Fire. Anyway, though, that pretty much summarizes everything. So take care. Have a wonderful time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everyone.